The Indian Air Force IAF is the air arm of the Indian Armed Forces. Its complement of personnel and aircraft assets ranks fourth amongst the air forces of the world. Its primary mission is to secure Indian airspace and to conduct aerial warfare during armed conflict. It was officially established on 8 October 1932 as an auxiliary air force of the British Empire which honoured India's aviation service during World War II with the prefix Royal. After India gained independence from the United Kingdom in 1947, the name Royal Indian Air Force was kept and served in the name of Dominion of India. With the government's transition to a republic in 1950, the prefix royal was removed after only three years. Since 1950, the IAF has been involved in four wars with neighboring Pakistan and one with the People's Republic of China. Other major operations undertaken by the IAF include Operation Vijay, Operation Meghdoot, Operation Cactus, and Operation Pumalai. The IAF S mission expands beyond engagement with hostile forces, with the IAF participating in United Nations peacekeeping missions. The President of India holds the rank of Supreme Commander of the IAF. As of 1 July 2017, 139,576 personnel are in service with the Indian Air Force. The Chief of Air Staff, an Air Chief Marshal, is a four-star officer and is responsible for the bulk of operational command of the Air Force. There is never more than one serving ACM at any given time in the IAF. The rank of Marshal of the Air Force has been conferred by the President of India on one occasion in history, to Aryan Singh. On 26 January 2002 Singh became the first and so far, only five-star rank officer of the IAF. Mission the IAF's mission is defined by the Armed Forces Act of 1947, the Constitution of India, and the Air Force Act of 1950. It decrees that in the aerial battle space, Defense of India and every part thereof including preparation for defense and all such acts as may be conducive in times of war to its prosecution and after its termination to effective demobilization. In practice, this is taken as a directive meaning the IAF bears the responsibility of safeguarding Indian airspace and thus furthering national interests in conjunction with the other branches of the armed forces. The IAF provides close air support to the Indian Army troops on the battlefield as well as strategic and tactical airlift capabilities. The integrated space cell is operated by the Indian Armed Forces, the Civilian Department of Space, and the Indian Space Research Organization. By uniting the civilian-run space exploration organizations and the military faculty under a single integrated space cell the military is able to efficiently benefit from innovation in the civilian sector of space exploration, and the civilian departments benefit as well. The Indian Air Force, with highly trained crews, pilots, and access to modern military assets provides India with the capacity to provide rapid response evacuation, search and rescue SAR operations, and delivery of relief supplies to affected areas via cargo aircraft. The IAF provided extensive assistance to relief operations during natural calamities such as the Gujarat cyclone in 1998, the tsunami in 2004, and North India floods in 2013. The IAF has also undertaken relief missions such as Operation Rainbow in Sri Lanka. History Formation and early pilots The Indian Air Force was established on 8 October 1932 in British India as an auxiliary air force of the Royal Air Force. The enactment of the Indian Air Force Act 1932 stipulated out their auxiliary status and enforced the adoption of the Royal Air Force uniforms, badges, brevets and insignia. On 1 April 1933, the IAF commissioned its first squadron, No. 1 Squadron, with four Westland Wapiti biplanes and five Indian pilots. The Indian pilots were led by British RAF Commanding Officer Flight Lieutenant later Air Vice Marshal Cecil Bouchier. Topic World War II 1939 Topic During World War II, the IAF played an instrumental role in halting the advance of the Japanese Army in Burma, where the first IAF air strike was executed. 
The target for this first mission was the Japanese military base in Arakan, after which IAF strike missions continued against the Japanese airbases at Mae Hong Sun, Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai in northern Thailand. The IAF was mainly involved in strike, close air support, aerial reconnaissance, bomber escort and pathfinding missions for RAF and USAAF heavy bombers. RAF and IAF pilots would train by flying with their non-native air wings to gain combat experience and communication proficiency. IAF pilots participated in air operations in Europe as part of the RAF. During the war, the IAF experienced a phase of steady expansion. New aircraft added to the fleet included the U.S. built Vultee Vengeance, Douglas Dakota, the British Hawker Hurricane, Supermarine Spitfire, and Westland Lysander. In recognition of the valiant service by the IAF, King George VI conferred the prefix Royal in 1945. Thereafter the IAF was referred to as the Royal Indian Air Force. In 1950, when India became a republic, the prefix was dropped and it reverted to being the Indian Air Force. Topic first years of independence 1947 to 1950 topic After it became independent from the British Empire in 1947, British India was partitioned into the new states of the Dominion of India and the Dominion of Pakistan. Along the lines of the geographical partition, the assets of the Air Force were divided between the new countries. India's Air Force retained the name of the Royal Indian Air Force, but three of the ten operational squadrons and facilities, located within the borders of Pakistan, were transferred to the Royal Pakistan Air Force. The RIAF roundel was changed to an interim chakra roundel derived from the Ashoka Chakra. Around the same time, conflict broke out between them over the control of the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir. With Pakistani forces moving into the state, its Maharaja decided to accede to India in order to receive military help. The day after, the instrument of accession was signed, the RIAF was called upon to transport troops into the war zone. And this was when a good management of logistics came into help. This led to the eruption of full-scale war between India and Pakistan, though there was no formal declaration of war. During the war, the RIAF did not engage the Pakistan Air Force in air-to-air -air combat, however, it did provide effective transport and close air support to the Indian troops. When India became a republic in 1950, the prefix Royal was dropped from the Indian Air Force. At the same time, the current IAF roundel was adopted. Topic Congo Crisis and Annexation of Goa 1960-1961 Topic The IAF saw significant conflict in 1960, when Belgium's 75-year rule over Congo ended abruptly, engulfing the nation in widespread violence and rebellion. The IAF activated No. 5 Squadron, equipped with English Electric Canberra, to support the United Nations operation in the Congo. The squadron started undertaking operational missions in November. The unit remained there until 1966, when the UN mission ended. Operating from Leopoldville and Kamina, the Canberras soon destroyed the rebel air force and provided the UN ground forces with its only long-range air support force. In late 1961, the Indian government decided to attack the Portuguese colony of Goa after years of disagreement between New Delhi and Lisbon. The Indian Air Force was requested to provide support elements to the ground force in what was called Operation Vijay. Probing flights by some fighters and bombers were carried out from 8 to 18 December to draw out the Portuguese Air Force, but to no avail. On the 18th of December, two waves of Canberra bombers bombed the runway of Dabalim Airfield, taking care not to bomb the terminals and the ATC tower. Two Portuguese transport aircraft, a Super Constellation and a DC-6, found on the airfield were left alone so that they could be captured intact. However the Portuguese pilots managed to take off the aircraft from the still damaged airfield and made their getaway to Portugal. Hunters attacked the wireless station at Bambalam. Vampires were used to provide air support to the ground forces. In Daman, mistiers were used to strike Portuguese gun positions. Aragans called Tufanis in the IAF bombed the runways at DIU and destroyed the control tower, wireless station and the meteorological station. After the Portuguese surrendered the former colony was integrated into India. Topic border disputes and changes in the IAF 1962 to 1971 Topic In 1962, border disagreements between China and India escalated to a war when China mobilized its troops across the Indian border. During the Sino-Indian War, India's military planners failed to deploy and effectively use the IAF against the invading Chinese forces. 
This resulted in India losing a significant amount of advantage to the Chinese, especially in Jammu and Kashmir. Three years after the Sino Indian conflict, in 1965, Pakistan launched Operation Gibraltar, strategy of Pakistan to infiltrate Jammu and Kashmir, and start a rebellion against Indian rule. This came to be known as the Second Kashmir War. This was the first time the IAF actively engaged an enemy air force. However, instead of providing close air support to the Indian Army, the IAF carried out independent raids against PAF bases. These bases were situated deep inside Pakistani territory, making IAF fighters vulnerable to anti-aircraft fire. During the course of the conflict, the PAF enjoyed technological superiority over the IAF and had achieved substantial strategic and tactical advantage due to their sudden attack and wholehearted diplomatic and military support from the US and Britain. The IAF was restrained by the government from retaliating to PAF attacks in the eastern sector while a substantive part of its combat force was deployed there and could not be transferred to the western sector, against the possibility of Chinese intervention. Moreover, international UN stipulations and norms did not permit military force to be introduced into the Indian state of J&K beyond what was agreed during the 1949 ceasefire. Despite this, the IAF was able to prevent the PAF from gaining air superiority over conflict zones. The small and nimble IAF Falland Nats proved effective against the F-86 Sabres of the PAF earning it the nickname Sabre Slayers. By the time the conflict had ended, the IAF lost 60 to 70 aircraft, while the PAF lost 43 aircraft. More than 60% of IAF's aircraft losses took place in ground attack missions to enemy ground fire, since fighter-bomber aircraft would carry out repeated dive attacks on the same target. According to, Air Chief Marshal Aryan Singh of the Indian Air Force, despite having been qualitatively inferior, IAF achieved air superiority in three days in the 1965 war after the 1965 war, the IAF underwent a series of changes to improve its capabilities. In 1966, the Para Commandos Regiment was created. To increase its logistics supply and rescue operations ability, the IAF inducted 72 HS 748s which were built by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited HAL under license from Avro. India started to put more stress on indigenous manufacture of fighter aircraft. As a result, HAL HF-24 Marut, designed by the famed German aerospace engineer Kurt Tank, were inducted into the Air Force. HAL also started developing an improved version of the Fallen Nat, known as HAL Ajit. At the same time, the IAF also started inducting Mach 2 capable Soviet MiG 21 and Suhoi Su 7 fighters. <laughs> <laughs> Bangladesh Liberation War 1971. By late 1971, the intensification of the independence movement in erstwhile East Pakistan led to the Bangladesh Liberation War between India and Pakistan. On the 22nd of November 1971, ten days before the start of a full-scale war, four PAF F-86 Sabre jets attacked Indian and Mukti Bahini positions at Garabpur, near the international border. Two of the four PAF Sabres were shot down and one damaged by the IAF's fallen Nats. On 3 December, India formally declared war against Pakistan following massive preemptive strikes by the PAF against Indian Air Force installations in Srinagar, Imbala, Sursa, Halwara and Jodhpur. However, the IAF did not suffer significantly because the leadership had anticipated such a move and precautions were taken. The Indian Air Force was quick to respond to Pakistani air strikes, following which the PAF carried out mostly defensive sorties. Within the first two weeks, the IAF had carried out almost 12,000 sorties over East Pakistan and also provided close air support to the advancing Indian Army. IAF also assisted the Indian Navy in its operations against the Pakistani Navy and Maritime Security Agency in the Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea. On the Western Front, the IAF destroyed more than 20 Pakistani tanks, four APCs and a supply train during the Battle of Longawala. The IAF undertook strategic bombing of West Pakistan by carrying out raids on oil installations in Karachi, the Mongla Dam and a gas plant in Sindh. Similar strategy was also deployed in East Pakistan and as the IAF achieved complete air superiority on the Eastern Front, the ordnance factories, runways, and other vital areas of East Pakistan were severely damaged. 
By the time Pakistani forces surrendered, the IAF destroyed 94 PAF aircraft. The IAF was able to conduct a wide range of missions, troop support, air combat, deep penetration strikes, para dropping behind enemy lines, feints to draw enemy fighters away from the actual target, bombing, and reconnaissance. In contrast, the Pakistan Air Force, which was solely focused on air combat, was blown out of the subcontinent's skies within the first week of the war. Those PAF aircraft that survived took refuge at Iranian air bases or in concrete bunkers, refusing to offer a fight. Hostilities officially ended at 14.30 Greenwich Mean Time on 17 December, after the fall of Dhaka on 15 December. India claimed large gains of territory in West Pakistan although pre-war boundaries were recognized after the war, and the independence of Pakistan. S East Wing as Bangladesh was confirmed. The IAF had flown over 16,000 sorties on both East and West fronts, including sorties by transport aircraft and helicopters, while the PAF flew about 30 and 2,840. More than 80% of the IAF S sorties were close support and interdiction, and according to neutral assessments about 45 IAF aircraft were lost while, Pakistan lost 75 aircraft. Not including any F-6s, Mirage IIIs, or the six Jordanian F-104s which failed to return to their donors. But the imbalance in air losses was explained by the IAF considerably higher sortie rate, and its emphasis on ground attack missions. On the ground Pakistan suffered most, with 9,000 killed and 25,000 wounded while India lost 3,000 dead and 12,000 wounded. The loss of armoured vehicles was similarly imbalanced. This represented a major defeat for Pakistan. Towards the end of the war, IAF's transport planes dropped leaflets over Dhaka urging the Pakistani forces to surrender, demoralising Pakistani troops in East Pakistan. Topic. Incidents before Kargil 1984 Topic. In 1984, India launched Operation Meghdoot to capture the Siachen Glacier in the contested Kashmir region. In Op Meghdoot, IAF's Mi-8, Cheetok and Cheetah helicopters airlifted hundreds of Indian troops to Siachen. Launched on 13 April 1984, this military operation was unique because of Siachen's inhospitable terrain and climate. The military action was successful, given the fact that under a previous agreement, neither Pakistan nor India had stationed any personnel in the area. With India's successful Operation Meghdoot, it gained control of the Siachen Glacier. India has established control over all of the 70 kilometers 43 miles long Siachen glacier and all of its tributary glaciers as well as the three main passes of the Saltoro ridge immediately west of the glacier Siala, Bilafondla, and Gongla Pakistan controls the glacial valleys immediately west of the Saltoro ridge According to Time magazine India gained more than 1000 square miles 3000 square kilometers of territory because of its military operations in Siachen Following the inability to negotiate an end to the Sri Lankan civil war, and to provide humanitarian aid through an unarmed convoy of ships, the Indian government decided to carry out an airdrop of the humanitarian supplies on the evening of 4 June 1987 designated Operation Pumalai Tamil, Garland, or Eagle Mission 4. 5 and 32s escorted by four Mirage 2000 of 7 Squadron AF. The Battleaxes carried out the supply drop which faced no opposition from the Sri Lankan armed forces. Another Mirage 2000 orbited 150 km away, acting as an airborne relay of messages to the entire fleet since they would be outside radio range once they descended to low levels. The Mirage 2000 escort formation was led by WGCDR Ajit Bhavnani, with Squadron LDR's Bakshi, Ma Moitra and JS Panasar as his team members and Squadron LDR KG Biwar as the relay pilot. Sri Lanka accused India of blatant violation of sovereignty. India insisted that it was acting only on humanitarian grounds. In 1987, the IAF supported the Indian Peacekeeping Force (IPKF) in northern and eastern Sri Lanka in Operation Pawan. About 70,000 sorties were flown by the IAF. 
S transport and helicopter force in support of nearly 100,000 troops and paramilitary forces without a single aircraft lost or mission aborted. IAF and 32s maintained a continuous air link between air bases in South India and northern Sri Lanka transporting men, equipment, rations and evacuating casualties. Mi-8s supported the ground forces and also provided air transportation to the Sri Lankan civil administration during the elections. Mi-25s of No. 125 helicopter unit were utilized to provide suppressive fire against militant strong points and to interdict coastal and clandestine riverine traffic. On the night of the 3rd of November 1988, the Indian Air Force mounted special operations to airlift a parachute battalion group from Agra, non-stop over 2,000 kilometers to the remote Indian Ocean archipelago of the Maldives in response to Maldivian President Gayum. S request for military help against a mercenary invasion in Operation Cactus. The IL 76s of No. 44 Squadron landed at Hulul at 0030 hours, and the Indian paratroopers secured the airfield and restored government rule at mail within hours. Four Mirage 2000 aircraft of 7 Squadron, led by WGCDRAV, Doc Vadia, carried out a show of force early that morning, making low level passes over the islands. Topic. Kargil War 1999. Topic. On of May 1999, the Indian Air Force was called in to provide close air support to the Indian Army at the height of the ongoing Kargil conflict with the use of helicopters. The IAF strike was code-named Operation Safed Sagar. The first strikes were launched on 26 May, when the Indian Air Force struck infiltrator positions with fighter aircraft and helicopter gunships. The initial strikes saw MiG-27s carrying out offensive sorties, with MiG-21s and later MiG-29s providing fighter cover. The IAF also deployed its radars and the MiG-29 fighters in vast numbers to keep check on Pakistani military movements across the border. Srinagar Airport was at this time closed to civilian air traffic and dedicated to the Indian Air Force. On the 27th of May, the Indian Air Force suffered its first fatality when it lost a MiG-21 and a MiG-27 in quick succession. The following day, while on an offensive sortie, a Mi-17 was shot down by three Stinger missiles and lost its entire crew of four. Following these losses the IAF immediately withdrew helicopters from offensive roles as a measure against the threat of manned portable air defense systems On 30 May, the Mirage 2000s were introduced in offensive capability, as they were deemed better in performance under the high altitude conditions of the conflict zone. Mirage 2000s were not only better equipped to counter the manpad threat compared to the MiGs, but also gave IAF the ability to carry out aerial raids at night. The MiG-29s were used extensively to provide fighter escort to the Mirage 2000. Radar transmissions of Pakistani F-16s were picked up repeatedly, but these aircraft stayed away. The Mirages successfully targeted enemy camps and logistic bases in Kargil and severely disrupted their supply lines. Mirage 2000s were used for strikes on Muntho Dalo and the heavily defended Tiger Hill and paved the way for their early recapture. At the height of the conflict, the IAF was conducting over 40 sorties daily over the Kargil region. By 26 July, the Indian forces had successfully repulsed the Pakistani forces from Kargil. Post-Kargil incidents 1999-present on 10 August 1999, IAF MiG-21s intercepted a Pakistan Navy Brigade Atlantique which was flying over Sir Creek, a disputed territory. The aircraft was shot down killing all 16 Pakistani Navy personnel on board. India claimed that the Atlantic was on a mission to gather information on IAF air defense, a charge emphatically rejected by Pakistan which argued that the unarmed aircraft was on a training mission. Since the late 1990s, the Indian Air Force has been modernizing its fleet to counter challenges in the new century. The fleet size of the IAF has decreased to 33 squadrons during this period because of the retirement of older aircraft. Still, India maintains the fourth largest air force in the world. The IAF plans to raise its strength to 42 squadrons. Self-reliance is the main aim that is being pursued by the Defense Research and Manufacturing Agencies. 
On 20 August 2013, the Indian Air Force created a world record by performing the highest landing of a C-130J at the Daulat Beg Oldi airstrip in Ladakh at the height of 16,614 feet 5 meters. The medium lift aircraft will be used to deliver troops, supplies and improve communication networks. The aircraft belonged to the Veiled Vipers Squadron based at Hindon Air Force Station. On 13 July 2014, two MiG-21s were sent from Jodhpur Air Base to investigate a Turkish Airlines aircraft over Jaisalmer when it repeated an identification code, provided by another commercial passenger plane that had already entered Indian airspace before it. The flights were on their way to Mumbai and Delhi, and the planes were later allowed to proceed after their credentials were verified. On the 25th of July 2014, an advanced landing helicopter crashed in a field near Siddhapur in Uttar Pradesh on its way to Allahabad from Bareilly. At least seven people were killed as a result. On the 28th of March 2014, C-130J-30KC-3803 crashed near Gwalior, India, killing all five personnel aboard. The aircraft was conducting low-level penetration training by flying at around 300 feet when it ran into wake turbulence from another aircraft in the formation, which caused it to crash. On the 2nd of January 2016, the Pathankot Air Force Station was attacked by terrorists, resulting in seven casualties. On the 22nd of November 2017, at 10:40 a.m., the IAF conducted the first test launch from air of the 2.8 Mach surface attack BrahMos missile. Structure The President of India is the Supreme Commander of all Indian Armed Forces and by virtue of that fact is the National Commander-in-Chief of the Air Force. The Chief of the Air Staff with the rank of Air Chief Marshal is the Commander of the Indian Air Force. He is assisted by six officers, all with the rank of Air Marshal, in January 2002, the government conferred the rank of Marshal of the Air Force on Aryan Singh making him the first and only five-star officer with the Indian Air Force and ceremonial chief of the Air Force. Commands <laughs> 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 The Indian Air Force is divided into five operational and two functional commands. Each command is headed by an Air Officer Commanding-in-Chief with the rank of Air Marshal. The purpose of an operational command is to conduct military operations using aircraft within its area of responsibility, whereas the responsibility of functional commands is to maintain combat readiness. Aside from the training command at Bangalore, the primary flight training is done at the Air Force Academy, Dundagol, located in Hyderabad, followed by operational training at various other schools. Advanced officer training for command positions is also conducted at the Defence Services Staff College. Specialized advanced flight training schools are located at Bidar, Karnataka and Hakimpet, Telangana, also the location for helicopter training. Technical schools are found at a number of other locations. Note plus equals functional command. Topic: Stations. Topic: Within each operational command are anywhere from 9 to 16 bases or stations, each commanded by an air commodore. A station typically has one wing and one or two squadrons assigned to it. Wings A wing is a formation intermediate between a command and a squadron. It generally consists of two or three IAF squadrons and helicopter units, along with forward base support units FBSU. FBSUs do not have or host any squadrons or helicopter units but act as transit airbases for routine operations. In times of war, they can become fully-fledged air bases playing host to various squadrons. In all, about 47 wings and 19 FBSUs make up the IAF. Wings are typically commanded by a group captain. Topic. Squadrons and units Topic. Squadrons are the field units and formations attached to static locations. Thus, a flying squadron or unit is a sub-unit of an Air Force station which carries out the primary task of the IAF. A fighter squadron consists of 18 aircraft. All fighter squadrons are headed by a commanding officer with the rank of wing commander. 
Some transport squadrons and helicopter units are headed by a commanding officer with the rank of group captain. Topic: Flights. Topic: Flights are subdivisions of squadrons commanded by a squadron leader. Each flight consists of two sections. Topic: Sections. Topic. The smallest unit is the section, led by a flight lieutenant. Each section consists of three aircraft. Within this formation structure, IAF has several service branches for day-to-day -day operations. They are Garud Commando Force in September 2004, the IAF established its own special operation unit called the Garrod Commando Force, consisting of approximately 1,500 personnel. For starting this special force volunteers from existing trades were called and sent for commando and specialized training at various institutes of army and other forces. The airmen who successfully completed all course were inducted in Garrod Force, while special recruitment and selections from various IAF training institute were made for selecting young air warriors for Garrod SF. By doing this IAF got two set of personnel for its SF, i.e. experienced senior lot with experience of working in various IAF units and younger airmen who can be groomed and brought up to the standards of SF. The unit derives its name from Garuda, a divine mythical bird of Hindu mythology, but more commonly the word for Garuda in Sanskrit. Garud is tasked with the protection of critical installations. During hostilities, Garuds undertake combat search and rescue, rescue of downed airmen and other forces from behind enemy lines, suppression of enemy air defense, seed, radar busting, combat control, missile and munitions guidance, lacing of targets, and other missions in support of air operations. It has been suggested that they undertake an offensive role including raids on enemy air bases etc. during times of war. Apart from protecting air bases from sabotage and attacks by commando raids, they are also tasked to seal off weapon systems, fighter hangars and other major systems during intrusions and conflicts, and disaster relief during calamities. Topic. Integrated space cell Topic. An integrated space cell, which will be jointly operated by all the three services of the Indian Armed Forces, the Civilian Department of Space and the Indian Space Research Organization has been set up to utilize more effectively the country's space-based assets for military purposes. This command will leverage space technology including satellites. Unlike an aerospace command, where the Air Force controls most of its activities, the integrated space cell envisages cooperation and coordination between the three services as well as civilian agencies dealing with space. India currently has 10 remote sensing satellites in orbit. Though most are not meant to be dedicated military satellites, some have a spatial resolution of 1 meter or below which can be also used for military applications. Noteworthy satellites include the Technology Experiment Satellite TES, which has a panchromatic camera pan with a resolution of 1 meter, the RISAT-2 which is capable of imaging in all weather conditions and has a resolution of 1 meter, the CARTOSAT-2, CARTOSAT-2A and CARTOSAT-2B which carries a panchromatic camera which has a resolution of 80 cm black and white only. Topic. Display teams Topic. The Surya Kiran Aerobatic Team SCAT, Surya Kiran is, Sanskrit for sun rays, is an aerobatics demonstration team of the Indian Air Force. They were formed in 1996 and are successors to the Thunderbolts. The team has a total of 13 pilots selected from the fighter stream of the IAF and operate 9 HALHJT-16 Kiran Mk.2 trainer aircraft painted in a day glow orange and white color scheme. The Surya Kiran team were conferred squadron status in 2006, and presently have the designation of 52 squadron. The Sharks. The team is based at the Indian Air Force Station at Bidar. The IAF has begun the process of converting Surya Kirans to Bay Hawks. Sarang Sanskrit for peacock is the helicopter display team of the Indian Air Force. The team was formed in October 2003 and their first public performance was at the Asian Aerospace Show, Singapore, 2004. 
The team flies four HAL Dhruvs painted in red and white with a peacock figure at each side of the fuselage. The team is based at the Sular Air Force Station, Coimbatore. Topic. Personnel Topic. Over the years reliable sources provided notably divergent estimates of the personnel strength of the Indian Air Force after analyzing open source intelligence. The public policy organization globalsecurity.org had estimated that the IAF had an estimated strength of 110,000 active personnel in 1994. In 2006, Anthony Cordesman estimated that strength to be 170,000 in the International Institute for Strategic Studies IISS publication, The Asian Conventional Military Balance in 2006. In 2010, James Hackett revised that estimate to an approximate strength of 127,000 active personnel in the IISS publication, Military Balance 2010. As of 1 July 2017, the Indian Air Force has a sanctioned strength of 12,550 officers 12,404 serving with 146 under strength, and 142,529 airmen 127,172 serving with 15,357 under strength. Rank structure Topic. The rank structure of the Indian Air Force is based on that of the Royal Air Force. The highest rank attainable in the IAF is Marshal of the Indian Air Force, conferred by the President of India after exceptional service during wartime. MIAF Aryan Singh is the only officer to have achieved this rank. The head of the Indian Air Force is the Chief of the Air Staff, who holds the rank of Air Chief Marshal. Topic. Officers. Topic. Anyone holding Indian citizenship can apply to be an officer in the Air Force as long as they satisfy the eligibility criteria. There are four entry points to become an officer. Male applicants, who are between the ages of 161 halves and 19 and have passed high school graduation, can apply at the intermediate level. Men and women applicants, who have graduated from college three-year course and are between the ages of 18 and 28, can apply at the graduate level entry. Graduates of engineering colleges can apply at the engineer level if they are between the ages of 18 and 28 years. The age limit for the flying and ground duty branch is 23 years of age and for technical branch is 28 years of age. After completing a master's degree, men and women between the ages of 18 and 28 years can apply at the postgraduate level. Postgraduate applicants do not qualify for the flying branch. For the technical branch the age limit is 28 years and for the ground duty branch it is 25. At the time of application, all applicants below 25 years of age must be single. The IAF selects candidates for officer training from these applicants. After completion of training, a candidate is commissioned as a flying officer. Topic. Airmen Topic. The duty of an airman is to make sure that all the air and ground operations run smoothly. From operating air defense systems to fitting missiles, they are involved in all activities of an air base and give support to various technical and non-technical jobs. The airmen of technical trades are responsible for maintenance, repair and prepare for use the propulsion system of aircraft and other airborne weapon delivery system, radar, voice, data transmission and reception equipment, latest airborne weapon delivery systems, all types of light, mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic systems of airborne missiles, aero engines, aircraft fueling equipment and heavy-duty mechanical vehicles, cranes and loading equipment etc. The competent and qualified airmen from technical trades also participate in flying as flight engineers, flight signalers and flight gunners. The recruitment of personnel below officer rank is conducted through All India Selection Tests and Recruitment Rallies. All India Selection Tests are conducted among 15 Airmen Selection Centres located all over India. These centers are under the direct functional control of Central Airmen Selection Board CASB, with administrative control and support by respective commands. The role of CASB is to carry out selection and enrollment of airmen from the Airmen Selection Centers for their respective commands. Candidates initially take a written test at the time of application. 
Those passing the written test undergo a physical fitness test, an interview conducted in English, and medical examination. Candidates for training are selected from individuals passing the battery of tests, on the basis of their performance. Upon completion of training, an individual becomes an airman. Some MWOs and WOs are granted honorary commission in the last year of their service as an honorary flying officer or flight lieutenant before retiring from the service. Topic. Honorary officers Topic. Sachin Tendulkar was the first sportsperson and the first civilian without an aviation background to be awarded the honorary rank of group captain by the Indian Air Force. Non-combatants enrolled and civilians Non-combatants enrolled NCs e were established in British India as personal assistants to the officer class, and are equivalent to the orderly or sahayak of the Indian Army. Almost all the commands have some percentage of civilian strength which are central government employees. These are regular ranks which are prevalent in ministries. They are usually not posted outside their stations and are employed in administrative and non-technical work. Topic. Training and education Topic. The Indian Armed Forces have set up numerous military academies across India for training its personnel, such as the National Defence Academy NDA. Besides the tri-service institutions, the Indian Air Force has a training command and several training establishments. While technical and other support staff are trained at various ground training schools, the pilots are trained at the Air Force Academy, Dundagol, located in Hyderabad. The pilot training establishment at Allahabad, the Air Force Administrative College at Coimbatore, the Institute of Aerospace Medicine at Bangalore, the Air Force Technical College, Bangalore at Jalahalli, the Tactics and Air Combat and Defense Establishment at Gwalior, and the Paratroopers Training School at Agra are some of the other training establishments of the IAF. Aircraft <inaudible> 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 The Indian Air Force has aircraft and equipment of Russian erstwhile Soviet Union, British, French, Israeli, U.S. and Indian origins with Russian aircraft dominating its inventory. HAL produces some of the Russian and British aircraft in India under license. The exact number of aircraft in service with the Indian Air Force cannot be determined with precision from open sources. Various reliable sources provide notably divergent estimates for a variety of high-visibility aircraft. Flight International estimates there to be around 1,721 aircraft in service with the IAF. While the International Institute for Strategic Studies provides a similar estimate of 1,724 aircraft. Both sources agree there are approximately 900 combat-capable fighter, attack etc. aircraft in the IAF. Topic Multi-role fighters and strike aircraft Topic Suhoi Su-30 MKI, the IAF's primary air superiority fighter with the additional capability to conduct air ground strike missions is Suhoi Su-30 MKI. The IAF have placed an order for a total of 272 Su-30 MKIs of which 242 are in service as of January 2016. Mikoyan MiG-29, the Mikoyan MiG-29 known as Baz Hindi for Hawk, is a dedicated air superiority fighter and constitutes a second line of defense after the Suhoi Su-30 MKI. 69 MiG-29s are in service, all of which have been recently upgraded to the MiG-29 UPG standard. Dassault Mirage 2000, the Dassault Mirage 2000, known as Vajra Sanskrit for Diamond or Thunderbolt in Indian service, is the primary multirole fighter. The IAF currently operates 49 Mirage 2000 H's and 8 Mirage 2000 all of which are currently being upgraded to the Mirage 2000 to 5 Mk2 standard with Indian specific modifications and 2 Mirage 2000 to 5 Mk2 are in service as of March 2015. HAL Tejas, the MiG 21s are planned to be replaced by the indigenously built HAL Tejas. The first Tejas IAF unit, No. 45 Squadron IAF Flying Daggers, was formed on 1 July 2016 with two aircraft. Initially being stationed at Bangalore, the first squadron will be placed at its home base at Sular, Tamil Nadu. The Tejas will comprise 40 aircraft of the Mk 1 variant and 83 of the Mk 1A variant. 
The latter will have an AESA radar, improved EU fit and internal changes for ease of maintenance. SEPECAT Jaguar, the SEPECAT Jaguar known as Shamsher serves as the IAF's primary ground attack force. The IAF currently operates 139 Jaguars. The first batch of Darren 1 Jaguars are now going through a Darren 3 upgrade being equipped with LM2052 AESA radars and an improved jamming suite plus new avionics. Mikoyan MiG-27, the Mikoyan MiG-27 known as Bahadur, Hindi for Valiant, serves as the IAF's primary ground attack force. The IAF currently operates over 85 MiG-27s. The type will be phased out soon to account for increasing serviceability concerns and 40 of them have been upgraded for improved strike missions, including laser designation and with self-protection jamming Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-21. The Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-21 serves as an interceptor aircraft in the IAF. The IAF have phased out most of its MiG-21s and plans to keep only 125 that have been upgraded to MiG-21 Bison standard. These aircraft will be phased out between 2014 and 2017. Topic Airborne Early Warning and Control System Topic The IAF is currently training the crew in operating the indigenously developed DRDO AEW and CS flying on the Embraer ERJ-145 aircraft. The IAF also operates the LW-2090 Falcon AEW and C incorporated in a Berev A-50 platform. A total of three such systems are currently in service, with possible orders for two more. The two extra Falcons are currently in negotiation over price differences between Russia and India. India is also going ahead with Project India, an in-house AWACS program to develop and deliver six Falcon class AWACS, based on DRDO work on the smaller AEW and CS. Topic aerial refueling topic The IAF currently operates seven Ilyushin Il-78 MKIs in the aerial refueling tanker role. Topic transport aircraft topic For strategic airlift operations the IAF uses the Ilyushin Il-76, known as Gajraj Hindi for King Elephant in Indian service. The IAF operated 17 IL-76s in 2010, which are in the process of being replaced by C-17 Globemaster IIIs. The IAF C-130Js are used by special forces for combined Army Air Force operations. India purchased six C-130Js, however one crashed at Gwalior on 28 March 2014 while on a training mission, killing all five on board and destroying the aircraft. The Antonov N-32, known in Indian service as the Sutlej named after Sutlej River, serves as a medium transport aircraft in the IAF. The aircraft is also used in bombing rolls and para-dropping operations. The IAF currently operates 105 and 32s, all of which are being upgraded. The Dornier Du-228 serves as light transport aircraft in the IAF. The IAF also operates Boeing 737s and Embraer ECJ-135 legacy aircraft as VIP transports and passenger airliners for troops. Other VIP transport aircraft are used for both the President of India and the Prime Minister of India under the call sign Air India 1. The Hawker Siddeley HS-748 once formed the backbone of the IAF's transport fleet, but are now used mainly for training and communication duties. A replacement is under consideration. <laughs> Topic. Trainer aircraft Topic. The HAL HPT-32 Deepak is IAF's basic flight training aircraft for cadets. The HPT-32 was grounded in July 2009 following a crash that killed two senior flight instructors, but was revived in May 2010 and is to be fitted with a parachute recovery system PRS to enhance survivability during an emergency in the air and to bring the trainer down safely. The HPT-32 is to be phased out soon. The HPT-32 has been replaced by Pilatus, a Swiss aircraft. The IAF uses the HALHJT-16 Kiran MK, I for intermediate flight training of cadets, while the HJT-16 Kiran MK-2 provides advanced flight and weapons training. The HALHJT-16 Kiran MK.2 is also operated by the Surya Kiran Aerobatic Team of the IAF. The Kiran is to be replaced by the HALHJT-36 Sitara. 
The Bay Hawk MK-132 serves as an advanced jet trainer in the IAF and is progressively replacing the Kiran Mk-2. The IAF has begun the process of converting the Surya Kiran display team to Hawks. A total of 106 Bay Hawk trainers have been ordered by the IAF of which 39 have entered service as of July 2010. IAF also ordered 72 Pipistrelle Virus SW-80 microlight aircraft for basic training purpose. Helicopters The HAL Dhruv serves primarily as a light utility helicopter in the IAF. In addition to transport and utility roles, newer Dhruvs are also used as attack helicopters. Four Dhruvs are also operated by the Indian Air Force Sarong Helicopter Display Team. The HAL Cheetok is a light utility helicopter and is used primarily for training, rescue and light transport roles in the IAF. The HAL Cheetok is being gradually replaced by HAL Dhruv. The HAL Cheetah is a light utility helicopter used for high altitude operations. It is used for both transport and search and rescue missions in the IAF, the Mil Mi-8 and the Mil Mi-17, Mi-17 1 volt and Mi-17 volts 5 are operated by the IAF for medium lift strategic and utility roles. The Mi-8 is being progressively replaced by the Mi-17 series of helicopters. The IAF has ordered 22 Boeing AH-64E Apache attack helicopters, 68 HAL Light Combat Helicopters LCH, 35 HAL Rudra attack helicopters, 15 CH-47F Chinook heavy lift helicopters and 150 Mi-17V-5s to replace and augment its existing fleet of Mi-8s and Mi-17s and Mi-24s. The Mil Mi-26 serves as a heavy lift helicopter in the IAF. It can also be used to transport troops or as a flying ambulance. The IAF currently operates three Mi-26s. The Mil Mi-35 serves primarily as an attack helicopter in the IAF. The Mil Mi-35 can also act as a low-capacity troop transport. The IAF currently operates two squadrons, number 104 Firebirds and number 125 Gladiators of Mi-25, 35s. Topic. Unmanned aerial vehicles Topic. The IAF currently uses the IAI Searcher 2 and IAI Heron for reconnaissance and surveillance purposes. The IAI Harpy serves as an unmanned combat aerial vehicle UCAV, which is designed to attack radar systems. The IAF also operates the DRDO Lakshya which serves as realistic towed aerial sub-targets for live fire training. Land-based missile systems Topic. Topic. Surface-to-air missiles Topic. The Spider surface-to-air Python and Derby is an Israeli short- and medium-range mobile air defense system developed by Rafael Advanced Defense Systems with assistance from Israel Aerospace Industries IAI. The Spider is a low-level, quick-reaction surface-to-air missile system capable of engaging aircraft, helicopters, unmanned air vehicles, drones, and precision-guided munitions. It provides air defense for fixed assets and for point and area defense for mobile forces in combat areas. Six Spider misses along with 300 Python 5 surface-to-missiles SAMs and 300 Derby SAMs are in service with the Indian Air Force. The S-125 Pachora and the 9K-330SA as surface-to-air missile systems in service are being replaced with the Akash medium-range surface-to-air missile system. A total of eight squadrons has been ordered so far out of which two squadrons have been delivered and stationed at Gwalior and Pune. Ballistic missiles <inaudible> 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 The IAF currently operates the Prithvi-2 short-range ballistic missile SRBM. The Prithvi-2 is an IAF-specific variant of the Prithvi ballistic missile. Topic. Future Topic. The number of aircraft in the IAF has been decreasing from the late 1990s due to the retirement of older aircraft and several crashes. 
To deal with the depletion of force levels, the IAF has started to modernize its fleet. This includes both the upgrade of existing aircraft, equipment and infrastructure as well as induction of new aircraft and equipment, both indigenous and imported. As new aircraft enter service and numbers recover, the IAF plans to have a fleet of 42 squadrons. Topic. Expected future acquisitions Topic. Topic. Single-engine fighter Topic. On 3 January 2017, Minister of Defense Manohar Parikar addressed a media conference and announced plans for a competition to select a strategic partner to deliver. 200 new single-engine fighters to be made in India, which will easily cost around USD $45 million apiece without weaponry." With an expectation that Lockheed Martin USA and Saab Sweden will pitch the F-16 Block 70 and Gripen, respectively. And MOD official said that a global tender will be put to market in the first quarter of 2018, with a private company nominated as the Strategic Partners Production Agency followed by a two or more year process to evaluate technical and financial bids and conduct trials, before the final government-to-government -government deal in 2021. This represents 11 squadrons of aircraft plus several attrition aircraft. India is also planning to set up an assembly line of American Lockheed Martin F-16 Fighting Falcon Block 70 in Bengaluru. It is not yet confirmed whether IAF will induct these aircraft or not. In 2018, the current Defence Minister Nirmala Sitharaman gave the go-ahead to scale up the manufacturing of Tejas at HAL and also to export Tejas. She is quoted saying, We are not ditching the LCA. We have not gone for anything instead of Tejas. We are very confident that Tejas Mark II will be a big leap forward to fulfill the single-engine fighter requirement of the forces. IAF committed to buy 201 Mark II variant of the Tejas taking the total order of Tejas to 324. The government also scrapped the plan to import single-engine fighters leading to reduction in reliance on imports thereby strengthening the domestic defense industry. The IAF also submitted a request for information to international suppliers for a stealth unmanned combat air vehicle UCAV. Topic Current acquisitions Topic The IAF has placed orders for 120 HAL Tejas fighters, 36 Dassault Rafale multi-role fighters, 112 Pilatus PC-7 MKII basic trainers, 72 HAL HJT-36 Sitara trainers, 72 Pipistrel Virus SW-80 Microlite aircraft, 10 C 17 Globemaster 3 strategic air lifters, 65 HAL light combat helicopters, 139 Mi-17 V-5 helicopters, and the IAF has also ordered 18 Israeli Spider Surface to Air Missile SAM units. IAF has also ordered 6 Airbus A330 tanker aircraft, 22 AH-64E Apache Longbow heavy attack helicopters, 15 CH-47F medium lift helicopters, and IAI Harap UCAVs. Topic DRDO and HAL projects Topic Indian defense companies such as HAL and DRDO are developing several aircraft for the IAF such as the HAL Tejas, Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft AMCA, DRDO AEW and CS revived from the Aravit project, NAL Saras, HAL HJT-36 Sitara, HAL HTT-40, HAL Light Combat Helicopter LCH, HAL Light Utility Helicopter LUH, DRDO Rustam and Aura Autonomous Unmanned Research Aircraft UCAV. DRDO has developed the Akash missile system for the IAF and is developing the Maitri SAM with MBDA. DRDO is also developing the Prithvi 2 ballistic missile. HAL has undertaken the joint development of the Suhoi HAL FGFA, fifth generation fighter aircraft, a derivative project of the Suhoi Su-57 with Russia's United Aircraft Corporation UAC. HAL is also close to develop its own fifth-generation fighter aircraft HAL AMCA which will be inducted by 2028. DRDO has entered in a joint venture with Israel Aerospace Industries IAI to develop the Barak 8 SAM. DRDO is developing the air-launched version of the BrahMos cruise missile in a joint venture with Russia's NPO Mashinostroyenia. DRDO has now successfully developed the nuclear-capable Nearbay cruise missile. 
Topic network centric warfare topic the Air Force Network AFNET a robust digital information grid that enabled quick and accurate threat responses was launched in 2010 helping the IAF become a truly network centric air force AFNET is a secure communication network linking command and control centers with offensive aircraft sensor platforms and ground missile batteries Integrated Air Command and Control System IACCS, an automated system for air defense operations will ride the AFNET backbone integrating ground and airborne sensors, weapon systems and command and control nodes. Subsequent integration with civil radar and other networks shall provide an integrated air situation picture, and reportedly acts as a force multiplier for intelligence analysis, mission control, and support activities like maintenance and logistics. The design features multiple layers of security measures, including encryption and intrusion prevention technologies, to hinder and deter espionage efforts. Topic see also topic topic notes topic topic references topic topic bibliography topic topic external links topic official website of the Indian Air Force Indian Air Force on Bharat Rakshak. Com. Global security article on Indo-Pakistani wars. Designators batches of Indian Air Force. Career Air Force Government of India